Welcome back everybody. Today we are going to be doing another J Plays video and that's going to be for Rhyperior from the 2007 format. Now in my opinion Rhyperior is a ton of fun to play but it can be a very difficult deck to play against unless you're really familiar with the deck and some of the deeper strategies for it. So even if this is a deck you're looking to pick up or if this is a deck you find yourself playing against I'm hoping this is going to be a really educational and entertaining video. Now I did a Full video breakdown of the deck which I'll link in the description down below um, this is going to be my updated list for the deck and I think I think there's a lot of things you can debate and discuss with this deck and some different ways you can go with it I think you can definitely argue this list within a few cards which I'm gonna go ahead and break down really quick here the biggest difference is going to be this Azuril um, I, I took this idea from a hooded man again he was the one who came up with the deck and the concept. Um, I definitely added some of my own twists and flares to it, and then I ended up playing him again a couple of months ago, um, probably about a month or so ago, with his his variation of again. It was kind of interesting because he had I took he had his variation, I took and added some of my own concepts to it, and then he came back and had some of my concepts in his updated list. And this is something that he had in the list, which I really thought was just just stellar was um, Azuril, which essentially it is a free delivery. So you basically get a sniff out from Minim, but you don't have to play an energy for it. The downside is, is this has 28 less HP and it does have a power, making it more susceptible to Curse Stone. The advantage is we can get away with playing fewer energy. So instead of playing three Azuril, I'm sorry, three Minim, and then three Holon's Magnemite, we're playing three Azuril, and then one Holon's Magnemite. This frees up two entire spots in the deck, which is a considerably large amount of room. I use that to add a Jirachi from Deoxys and then a uh, another Windstorm because essentially this gives us five good openers for the deck. And I'll even argue Jirachi is probably a better opener than Minim or Azuril is. And then that Windstorm is just so key being able to find that in the matchups that you need it in. If you're playing against a Lucario or Empoleon deck and you do not have Windstorm when you need it, you are going to be in an incredibly rough spot. Other than that, um, the list is, I believe, pretty much the exact same. Um, things to kind of note in this, or I think things you can kind of argue, I think you can make an argument to go with like a higher Jirachi count, and I think you could even make an argument to play like Warp Energy or Warp Point in the deck and then just try to get multiple Wishing Stars off. I found Porygon and Porygon 2 to be, I'm going to say, under underwhelming. Some matchups they're really good in and they can be really strong in. In other games, I just find my hands to be so large that I just, I'm not getting any value out of them. I think you can make arguments to drop them from the deck entirely and go with, like I said, the Jirachi, maybe a Warp Point strategy. That would also help with Cessation Crystals. Or I think you could also... Um, argue going like Macargo in the deck, have that combo with Apalm a little bit. The other option I think you'd do is go a little bit heavier on the aggressive Rhyperior and add cards like Scramble Energy. Um, and then there's a shard, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but essentially what it does is if you're behind in prizes, it adds 20 damage. So against like the Infernate matchup, um, that's going to add, it's going to let you use Rock Wrecker for 100 damage. It's also useful against like Mew EX. It'll knock Mew EX out. It'll knock Lucario out. So I think you could make arguments to play three or even four Scramble Energies and then one or two copies of that as well. And then just go really aggressive with that right period. Um, and then on the same token, I think Porygon 2 is, there's merit for it. I don't know if, if I think a 2 2 line is perfect. I think a good argument can be made for like a 1 1 line and then free up two additional spots. Um, yeah, just a lot of different things you can do there. And this is going to be the second variation of the deck I'm playing here. Where essentially, over the Porygon 2 spots, I am trying a 1-1 one, one Slow King line. And essentially what Slow King does is it lets you basically draw a card out of your prizes and then put a card from your hand face up into your prizes. So essentially it helps us if we prize, like, unfortunately, like 2 Rhyhorn or even just a single part of the Rhyhorn, Rhydon, or Rhyperior lines. Um, if we do end up prizing the Slow King, well then essentially that should decrease our odds of prizing something else we care about. So I think there's some merit to that. Um, it is a water type, which I think there can be some merit with that as well. Not very common. We're going to go aggressive with Slow King, but it's an option. 
And then I started testing Slow Rock and Lunatone. Now, while this seem, may seem very counterproductive considering we play Apalm as well, the idea behind it is that it's something I wanted to test to see if that would help the Infernate matchup, make it a little bit harder for them to discard those fire energies to do repeated loops of the level X and essentially hopefully put us in a spot where we could um, actually mill them out. It's not something I've tested extensively enough to give you definite answers on, but it is something I, I want to play around with a little bit in the deck. But anyways, um, this is the list I played for the first four games, and then this is the list I played in the last game. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right on into the uh, the games. So we get a pretty good opening here with the Jirachi. Uh, we get the Azuril too, but we really don't have a whole lot going for us in our opening hand here. We're going to be hoping to find a Transceiver or a Mentor. We do get the Transceiver. Now, our opponent is playing some sort of Mew. Uh, I'm thinking Speed Spread at this point. Um, benching the Cast Form was a little unusual, but it is going to give him a draw. He can use Mew to copy Delta Draw and get the uh, get the one draw off EV. Off EV. Um, I still think his hand's pretty weak to make that play. But he could also play something like Giant Stump or something and just think it's worth the draw. It just comes across as one of those plays that's really cute, but um, I don't know if it's going to be worth it in the end. Throws down the Battle Frontier. This could actually cause us quite a few issues. Um, we're not able to find a counter. We do play four hole and circle, though, and three windstorms, so we should be sitting pretty good. Checking what we see, we have prized. In my first search through the deck, I always check the Rhyhorns, Rhydons, and Rhyperior counts. Those are going to be the most important. Um, the Mr. Brainy's Compassion and Super Scoop Up counts are also very important. Looks like I'm just going to grab two Rhyhorn and a Porygon. I did do the Mentor before the Wishing Star. I want to pull those basics out of my deck um, to just increase my odds a little bit of getting a slightly better Mentor off. No, I don't have the out right now, but I am feeling pretty confident that I'll be able to bump that Battle Frontier. So my opponent does have the Jolteon. Um, grand scheme of things, it's not going to be anything too... It's not going to be anything major. The fact that he plays Jolteon means that he probably does not play Curse Stone. And just those 10 damage aren't going to do a whole lot, especially to the right periods, and we're going to be constantly picking those up. The Electric does scare me a little bit. If he is able to get a disconnect off before we're able to replace the Battle Frontier, that could put us in a little bit of a troublesome spot. I do like the Rhydon, Scramble, and Celio's Network in hand. I think those are all going to be very strong cards. Looks like our opponent's just thinking a little bit here. I believe they benched both the Electrics this turn, so they're not going to be able to evolve it. He is going to have some options, though. He can second bite here. Um, he can recharge if he thinks that's going to be a good play, but he's not going to be able to get the knockout. Goes to the recharge. We do get very lucky and get the, um, we do wake up there. Just taking that Jirachi, feeling the best about that. Um, we're going to see this probably for another right here, right on. Yep, grabbed another right on. Now, I think there's an argument to scramble here. I decided to go ahead and hold it. Um, you can make some arguments for or against this play. I think the advantage of playing the scramble would be that I could then play the scramble, the second scramble on the following turn, and then Brainies. Or I'm not, sorry, not Brainies, but Copycat. Opponent does get the Benetric off. It looks like that Battle Frontier is going to stick around. That's going to be unfortunate for me. Opponent's hand size is so low at this point uh, that Copycat's probably not going to get me very far. I'm going to be most likely looking for Jirachi and just go Wishing Star on my on the following turn. If I'm able to find a Rhyperior, I could actually Brainies the Jirachi and then um, swing with the Rhyperior. There's pros and cons to that play. Opponent actually does not take the prize card. Yeah, knowing that I'm going to get, most likely get disconnected for quite a few turns, um, I'm actually opting to take the Porygon 2 there. That's just the most live card. Once again, I had some arguments to play the Scramble Energy down. I'm holding the Azuril at this point um, for a couple different reasons. If he does play like a, a Curse Stone, like a one of Curse Stone, that could be a problem. All right, so I do go ahead, uh, find the right period, get the Mr. Brainy's Compassion on the Jirachi. Hit the Mew for 80. I'm hoping to grab a couple of cheap prizes here, try to get that Mew out of play. 
Um, he can still disconnect with the Manectric. The advantage to that is going to be he's just not hitting for much because I am resistant. And at 140 HP, I am pretty, uh, pretty beefy. Now, there is an argument to Briny's here, but there's also an argument just to hold it. My opponent's not doing anything. They're not going to get anywhere fast. I do play the Briny's. Once again, I think you can make some different arguments for this. Um, I think I'm just kind of... Uh, since in the way this game is going, I want to put that pressure on them. They're already down to 23 cards. They're just, and they're, they keep playing cards here. Um, that Briny's Compassion on the Rhyperior is going to force my opponent to try to build up a third attacker here. Otherwise, they are just going to, um, they are just going to keep, keep taking damage and eventually just, they're not, they're going to have to find an attacker. Now, he did get the Super Scoop up on the Mew. That is unfortunate. Um... I double check, I can't rock record this turn, unfortunately I cannot. Advantage is, is once again that disconnect is hitting for a lone 20 damage, and I know that Mew's not going to be able to disconnect on the following turn. So the opponent's either going to have to sacrifice his Manetric EX, or bring up a second Manetric like he's doing here and just hit me for 20 damage. Um, opponent's not really making any play. I'm not feeling any pressure. I know he can't knock me out. We're just playing a nice slow control game. Still have the Briny's Compassion. We still have the Azurils to um, cycle the Mr. Briny's Compassion. 21 cards in deck. Yeah. Um, here. Let's back up here real quick. So, a um, couple of things. Gosh, I just missed again. Yeah, so a couple of things. This is, I think, essentially... Um, item lock is something that is can be very hard for a Purier. To struggle against he could have i think my opponent could have played this a couple of different ways i do think he could have played a much slower um control game there i think if he would have just stuck with the mew and gone with a very small board similar to how you would play against like durant just go mew manetric manetric or something or mew manetric mew and then just knowing that i'm not going to win on prizes that i would just sit there and try to use the muse to disconnect the rhyperiors if he does, if I do take a knockout on Mew, then he knows that I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to be ahead in prizes, and then that scramble is going to be dead. Then he can sit there with a second Mew and just kind of cycle that off and then eventually get to the point where he can ideally um, just go ahead and mega shot something on the bench, especially since we have that Porygon 2 just sitting there. Um, that's probably the game plan I would have taken. I think as many cards as he played, he most more than likely, I think we could have decked him out regardless of the item lock. But um, it would have been a much more interesting game, I think. Or much it, he could have made the game very close. All right, we get the unfortunate A palm start here, and it looks like we're going up against Infernape. Infernape is probably the worst matchup for the deck by a pretty large margin. Um, I would say it's probably about 20%. It's it's just the fact that the deck can cycle um, the energy so easily. Essentially, you have to get some really, really good mills off early. You've got to hit Hole and Transceivers or Hole and Farmer, and then you have to hit Windstorms. And then you basically have to get to the point where you can um, just stick a Hole and Circle for multiple turns in a row um, until you're able to mill your opponent out at the end of the game. Go ahead, attach energy. Wishing Star here, nothing too exciting. We're going to take the snappy move. Yeah, I'm just going to hold the hole in circle for right now. I know there's a chance he's going to knock me out, but um, we're just going to go ahead and hold the hole in circle for now. Opponent goes for the Infernape. Yeah, this is just about best case scenario for my opponent. Yeah, probably about the best second turn of the game he could have hoped for. But to be fair, this isn't anything crazy. Um, this is a pretty standard Infernape, Infernape opening. Like, looks like we're going for a um, mentor here. Yeah, essentially, we're just going to try to set up the Porygon 2 at some point. We are going to um, try to get to the point where we're just going to be looping our Hyperiors. This just looks like the best case situation for me. I think you can make an argument for this. I think you make an argument against this. I think my general thought process was that I was going to try to burn some Windstorms early. My opponent knows, uh, my opponent's way ahead. He knows he, he, he's going aggressive here. I was hoping he would try to burn a Windstorm there. He plays smart, though, switches to the Monferno. 
Yep, we're just going to start looping some Rhyperiors. Get back that hole in circle. Opponent's at 29 cards. The cards in deck aren't major, though. Plays a plus fire. Does hit for the 40. Do have the Rhyperior. Yeah, we're just... The mills we're hitting here is not great. Fortunately, we whiff the scramble energy. Yeah, not going to do anything. No real point in doing anything super aggressive here. We're just going to kind of sit back. That Rhyperior's got 140 HP. It can take a hit. Goes ahead. Does hit me for 60 with those mock punches. Boys, let's get the super scoop of Aqua and Earth Fissure. Once again, just, we're not hitting what we need to. We need to hit Windstorms. We need to hit... Um, hole in transceiver is a hole in farmer. We just gotta get good mills and we're just not getting them here. This matchup's rough enough, let alone in, if you're getting uh, average mills with the deck. Do go for a scat, two brandies and a hole in circle. Warp point here. Yeah, we're just gonna sacrifice the Porygon. At this point, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to go for the Rhyperior. And I had a Transceiver there. Once again, just going for the uh, Mentor. The nice thing is that that Apalm is going to get us a free draw. And a solid Apalm draw there, too. Yeah, now we're back to the bench we want. That double Rhyperior is going to insulate me a little bit from a warp point. Yep. One that has the level X. The pipe dream of that being prized is unfortunately not there either. Yep, and then he shuffles them all back in. This is where the matchup just gets so ridiculously hard. Just kind of weighing through my options here. I think I'm debating if it's worth farm using Hole and Farmer this turn. Probably is I'm actually gonna go for a Azura play. Nope, just gonna pass here. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything on this turn. No real point in pushing uh, the pace too much. Opponent is protecting the Infernape level X. He knows that's the win condition. Checking the deck, seeing what we got left. Going for that whole on scientist. Basically, we're just trying to put us in the best spot possible. Just trying to get, like, essentially a three Rhyperior mill turn off. But this is definitely looking pretty rough. Opponent just slow plays it. He knows as long as he's not going to lose on the next turn, he's fine. All right, we do hit a windstorm there. A little, little breath of hope from us. Pick up the Rhyperior. Yeah, it's going to get close here. Essentially, we're going to need to find a hole in circle. We're going to need to make one stick. I was going to yep, go ahead take the knockout there. He's going to be looking to win off of a flare-up on the following turn. We do use double Rhyperior. Essentially, the game plan is, is we've got to make a hole in circle stick on this turn. And then we have to make a hole in circle stick. Find and make a hole in circle stick on the following turn. Not an easy task, but that is going to be the path to victory. Yes, unfortunately, opponent has a windstorm. Um, well played by the opponent. Um, just an unfavorable matchup opponent got a good opening. We got some pretty average mills, and on top of that, they played the matchup perfectly. So, not one we were going to win there. Um, great to see good sportsmanship like this. This is not nearly as common anymore. I feel like people online just... I don't know. I just feel like when you play people online, especially like TCG1 lately, people just 
are like they're so used to just being behind a computer screen they just get frustrated so much more easily and they just aren't as personable as they used to be i don't know i think part of it's everything going on in the world and then i think part of it is just um people let their egos and things get a uh, get ahead of them but it looks like we are playing Bennett against Bennett. In theory, this should be incredibly favorable. Um, Bennett should essentially have very little. They are, they're never going to be able to one-shot our Hyperior, and they should have very little outs. Um, they're not going to play Farmer or anything like that. I am going to say it was incredibly um, incredibly strong of our opponent to open with both the Lunatone and Soul Rock. They just shut us out of that A-Palm right at the start of the game. We're never going to be able to get that. We're never going to be able to get a Porygon 2 off. I do feel like uh, there's an argument maybe I should have benched a Porygon there. My concern is if our opponent plays like a heavy Pokemon reversal count or something, I don't want to get to the point in the game where they just have cheap prizes they can take. I want them to fight through Rhyperiors. All right, go ahead and Earth Fisher there. Pretty decent Earth Fisher, to be honest. Um, they're going really heavy with that Lunatone Soul Rock, though. Um, this looks to be similar to the uh, the world's um, Jeremy Scarf Kim's deck, where he he played the the heavy Lunatone and Soul Rock. Uh, opponent says they missed the hole in circle. Yeah, that's incredibly easy to do, especially if you're not used to playing against this sort of deck. Um, it's very easy to miss that hole in circle. I'm gonna go ahead right Superior. Yep, get the next right Superior off. Opponent's already down to 28 cards. We're feeling feeling pretty good at this point. Yeah, we're just gonna start looping those. Uh, just start looping those right periods. We're gonna find a um, scramble energy eventually. Be able to start putting some pressure on the opponent. Yep, we're just going to start looping them. Um, at this point, the opponent's only taken one prize, so we can pretty comfortably um, sacrifice some things like Jirachi. Opponent does have the warp point, then we do have the uh, the Rhyperior. I think there was an argument to bench the Azuril there. I just don't want to give up free prizes. Yep. Um, I think there was an argument to wait a turn there too, but at the exact same time, uh, giving our opponent time is probably not the best play. Uh, one thing I'm going to say is once our opponent kind of realized what deck we're playing against, they just stopped playing cards, which is going to be very strong. Yep, we're just we're just going to keep. keep going with that as you real play well i know my poems only has three prizes left but we are we are at the point where we are playing um we can kind of control what prizes they get so we're going to go at earth fissure there i don't want to go down to one because then i could just lose off a reversal on like a right horn or something but at this point i'm feeling pretty confident they would need to get multiple reversal heads in a row. Um, I did copycat even with the Brineys in hand because I felt pretty good about uh, the odds of getting another Brineys out of that many cards. Yep, go ahead and hit him for 80. One has got 10 cards left. We're going to mill three more in the following turn. Probably pick up a couple of prizes here, too. Yeah, I don't really know where the Shady moves. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, you don't want to put the Shady move on the Pokemon you're actually going to attack. It just makes the Briny so much easier. All right, down to seven cards for the opponent. Yeah, pick up another super, super scoop up. I'm um, feeling pretty good at this point. When it's down to six cards, they just needed that psychic energy. That's super unfortunate they had a castaway for it.
Yep, another shady move. Double super scoop of tails. This is unfortunate here, but um, yeah, we're just gonna keep looping them at this point down to two cards. Uh, we should win it next turn off the uh, that last right period here. Play the warp point, shading move. Then we're just gonna, we're gonna have that last right period here. So our opponent, I think, actually played this really well. Um, they tried to play as few cards down as possible. They tried to go into their deck as little as possible. This is just a really, really rough matchup for the opponent. Um, they would have needed to get a very quick, strong start, and we would have needed to get a really slow, bad start. They would have had to been up quite a few prizes, but since they weren't able to just rush out the gate and take a ton of prizes before we got set up, we were able to kind of strategically give up prizes. So basically every prize that we gave up was going to be, um, should equal at least a mil for three because it was usually like a zoo roll for our brinies. So yeah, like I said, well played by the opponent, just a really rough matchup for him. Um, once again, though, just really good sportsmanship by the opponent. I wish I would see that more. All right, another Infernape. Now, I also want to say, I think one of the downsides, like, I honestly think Rhyperior is, like, 70-30 against most of the 2007 format. And then it's probably, like, pretty close to 50-50 with Empoleon. The Infernape matchup's 20-80. But the problem is, is that Infernape is honestly the easiest deck in 2007 to play. And it's also a lot of fun to play. So, a lot of the time, it's one of the most played decks in the format, especially by more casual people or people that are trying to learn the 2007 format. So if you basically go to like a 2007 tournament or you're just trying to play on the ladder, you're going to run into a lot of Infernape, which is probably good that you keep this deck in check. All right, quick prize from the opponent. Unfortunately, we did not have the right period. Doesn't look like we're going to find it there either. And go for the super scoop up for the brainies. All right. Probably have to take the adventurer there. I think we're just checking. Yep. What are we pitching? I don't really want to pitch either one of those. Okay. Uh, could have made a small argument to discard the Drachi there. Probably not the best play. Pitching one of our only one of our two scramble energies is is gonna make me a little nervous. Opponent they got a strong start, but they didn't really get anywhere. They don't have their Del Caddies in play, haven't found an Infernape yet. So this is yeah, it's kind of an interesting spot. We do show the scramble energy just to get that slightly better backup. Found a hole in farmer. Nothing too exciting with that hole in farmer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play down the hole in circle. I think the idea is that we're hoping we can um, um, just start to loop that, buy ourselves a turn, and then loop it. Give me one more turn to try to find that right here. here. Once again, just nothing going for the opponent here. All right, we are going to hole in farmer just to... Burn cards out of our hand. Just get a slightly better backup. Debating the hole in circle or this the searching for the hole in circle. I think the argument for playing the hole in circle is the fact that I can play the hole in circle down and then get a good backup on the following turn. Yeah, that's not said that Windstorm's pretty dead in this matchup. And this is the point where playing only one Celos network does actually hurt me. Um... Yeah, just playing that one Celio's network is... I would have liked to grab another one there. Oh, yeah, we're going to start trying to loop those. Pull in circles, give up another prize here, unfortunately. I'm going to go ahead, send up the Drachi. Find the Rhyperior, finally. 
Yep, spin the super scoop up. Jirachi, play down the right period. Solid mill there hitting a um, stadium. Our opponent is going with the power tree. And this is a little unusual. A lot of the time you're only going to find um, Infernape decks playing Windstorm. But I really don't think Inf power tree is that bad. Because sometimes you just don't have the energy in hand. And sometimes it, it is really nice um, to be able to power tree, grab an energy, and then discard it with Delcaddy. Especially if you have multiple Delcaddies in play. A lot of time that power tree might as well just read... Um, Draw three cards. All right, so we are going to do another Earth Fissure. Eh, milling the Infernape wasn't horrible there. It's not the mills we want, though. All right, going to go ahead and Rock Wrecker. Opponent says, cool deck. Um, unfortunately, it does not look like they are uh, part of the channel, and they didn't catch the, uh, the deck breakdown I did on it. So if anybody knows the Breen machine, definitely do me a favor, point him towards the channel. Um... And I'm just seeing that my opponent doesn't really have a whole lot. We're trying to push the pace a little bit here, especially since we've already burned through three Chimchars. So this is going to be the last Chimchar, last Infernape. We're almost even trying to go to our opponent a little bit into taking a prize here. I know if I can get that knockout and they have to hole in Farmer back to the Chimchars, um, that's going to be tough for him. All right, he plays down the Power Tree. This is even better for us. This is the sort of situations we want. We want where... Um, we can bump their stadium with our stadium. All right, yeah, I'll see now we're off for now. We're not getting bad mills. They're just, gosh, they're just not the mills we want. But he's one, well, yeah, it looks like he got a, he's got a pretty decent sized hand. He's got to start making the plays here. Making some plays. All right. Has the Infernape. Only one, two transceivers, no farmer. So he still has two transceivers and a farmer left. All right. Does not take the knockout. Oh, there's a transceiver and an Infernape. Okay, beautiful. Rare candy in there too. Ah, oh, he might have played the rare candy. All right, what are we looking for? Grabbing the Rhyperior. Sure. 12 cards on deck. Can we start looping those circles? We get a couple good hole in circles. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that Azuril. That, that might have been a misplay. I think the Rhyhorn might have been better there. Has the level X. Gosh. Oh, this is bad. This is one where we just we can just sense how close we were to winning this. And the opponent just has that flare up. That is so frustrating. So, yeah, we're just going to try to get a point where we can just mill like nine cards in one turn and just ideally get to the point where he has like less than nine cards in deck, but he doesn't have enough to use the, the burning head. I think this is maybe a good turn to try to... Yeah, bump the state. No, hitting him for 80 is probably strongest. Okay, so I do go for the... I think that was possibly a turn that we wanted to just hit him for 80. I think we were trying to bait the Windstorm or the Power Tree there. But I really do... Yeah, man, that would have been close. He might have been able to get another flare up off. I, but I think there was a good argument there to hit him for 80. And the fact that we only have one scramble energy is is, is rough. Alright, so opponent's only drawing two cards at a time. I think they're trying to be careful and play around. I think my mills... I, I don't think the opponent is super, um, I don't think they know 100% what we're playing. Okay, so I do have the hole in circle. I'm counting. Yeah, this is such just a rough spot. I think pitching that scramble energy early is really hurting me here. Okay. He should be able to get a flare up off. 
But does he have a way to discard? Okay, so he does have the Windstorm. Looking through my options. Check. Got to see how many energy he has in his discard. I'm assuming he has the 8 now. He has to have the 8. Yeah, it gets a second flare off up. Well, we can mill 9 here. So we're not like in the worst spot in the world. I'm going to go for the copycat. I'm sensing that maybe we can make a hole in circle play. Grab that Brainy's Compassion. I think this is rough. I think if... I don't know. If the opponent has Delcat EX. Okay, so if he doesn't flare up this turn... We win. He has to have the Delcat EX. Yeah, the drawing ones just don't make sense. I think you just go all out. You either have it or you don't. Yeah, he does not have the Delcat EX. I don't know if it was bad pricing or if he cut it. But we do end up getting the mill win. Um, Yeah, this was pretty fortunate for us. Um, this was pretty fortunate for us how this played out. Just the opponent either was the Del KDX was either one of the last two prizes or the opponent um um didn't run it. I am gonna say I think I think our opponent wasn't super familiar with our deck, and I think those last couple of turns that they would have understood how our deck played a little bit better, I think they could have navigated those last couple of turns a little bit better. Um But it was it was kind of a combination of that, and they just got a really slow start, but it was just something where it came up in our favor. All right, we'll go jump into the fifth. All right, we get the Azuril start. We have the Transceiver, Rhyhorn. I am going to say this is a pretty big misplay on my part. And in most formats, you do not want to double set. It's just a really bad habit to get into for a multitude of reasons, usually due to cards like Warp Point or Cyclone Energy or different attacks, um, such as Roselia's Flick Poison. But in this format, you definitely want to double set if your opening is weak to fighting, um, just because of how common Rylu is in this pot, in this format. So, um, yeah, a little misplay on my part. Hopefully, I don't get punished for it. I don't. Opponent goes first, just gets the peck off. Pretty decent start from us. We are running three Windstorms, so I'm feeling pretty good about this matchup. I won't say pretty good. It's like a 50-50 matchup. Fifty fifty might even be optimistic. No one minter. Discard the super scoop up. Did you notice this is this is the game that we are testing the um Slow King and then the um Lunatone Soul Rock. Opponent goes transceiver into a mentor. <clears throat> We go ahead and get the uh, delivery for the super scoop up. I was really hoping to see a Corsal here. I want to see my opponent retreat. This is worst case for scenario for us as they do have the turn to Aqua Shower. Um, probably only slightly better than um, a turn to Empoleon spread. Now we get an absolutely dead hand here. That hole in circle is going to be incredibly weak if our opponent has a cursed stone, which unfortunately they do. And they have the cessation crystal, so this is just not going our way at all. Opponent is going to get another knockout with just using that aqua shower. They just keep spreading here. Top deck the windstorm, major top deck for us. All right, solid mill there, getting rid of the curse stone. Let me go ahead and grab the transceiver. Would have been a, I would say, almost a better argument for Copycat. I think the Transceiver gives us a little bit more utility. So if our opponent knows our only card in hand is Copycat and they can, let's say, play down three cards, that's more advantageous to a, to them um, versus this scenario where they're like, well, if we play down too much, then he'll just get an adventure. Another Curse Stone. Oh, gosh, not good for us. Looking for that Scientist. And we prize the Scientist. Not good at all. We're going to get the adventure, and then we are going to grab a mentor just to burn it. Don't want to draw that. Looking for that scramble energy. 
and we hit the scramble energy. Unbelievable. We are just doing, we're doing just enough to stay in this game. That curse stone is still eating us alive. I'm going to say there was a pretty good argument there to windstorm, like a really strong argument to windstorm. Just kind of noting that we probably lose the game, um, regardless if our opponent has um, the cessation crystal or not. Opponent plays a warp point. We switch into the right on. Um, I just feel like this is the safest play. They don't have the Apollyon. They do have the, they're going for the Aqua Shower. We're going to go ahead, Rhyperior again. Uh, a couple of decent mills. Well, Steven's Advice are not cards we want them to have. We're going to get another Rock Wrecker off. We do Windstorm at this point. This should have been a couple of turns ago. Um, like I said, that was a pretty debatable play. But our opponent is still, we're still behind in prizes. And our opponent does not have any energy in play. Those Scramble Energy are not going to do them anything. All right. It goes ahead and Aqua. Showers there. Unfortunately, we did whiff on the... Um... Super scoop up. That would have been really strong there too. Oh, and we can't even rock wrecker. We have to hope this hole in circle survives. We're just putting so much faith in that hole in circle. To be fair, our opponent has played, I think, two or three curse stone at this point. Okay. They have the Empoleon. Go for the Ape Palm. We're gonna check the mills first. I think there was some argument. I think we should have just brain these first. Okay, take the right on. They have the energy. We're in so much trouble. I think 70, 30. They knock us out with an aqua jet. They have the energy. They get the heads on the aqua jet. We're bringing up the right at Rhyperior copycat with the hole in circle. There's that scramble energy we want. Transceiver not going to do it this turn. Top deck the Scramble Energy. Knock out the active Empoleon. Okay. Where's that Ice Blade going? Opponent hits the... They're going for the win on the Rhyhorn. This is risky. We hit the super scoop up heads, evolve into right on. Grab that. I think we're going to grab Slow King here just because, yeah, we can discard it to the um, adventure. Are we adventure. I misclick here and I accidentally choose from the deck. This is a huge mistake on my part. We're going to get the mentor. At least we're going to thin the deck and we're going to get a draw off that APOM. All right. Hit him for 80. And they hit. And they hit the uh, the Aqua Jet, but they cannot get the knockout. They don't have any more basic Pokemon. And we're actually going to be able to come up and win this off a of Rock Wrecker unbelievably crazy game so many times we drew the exact card we needed to do just enough to stay in this game um the fact that we came back and won this is honestly unbelievable like the odds of this happening were so small we just hit everything perfect but you do get those games and we definitely take them so um well played by the opponent just man just crazy string of luck on our parts but that's going to go ahead wrap up the video for uh, Rhyperior, I hope you guys got a little bit more insight into not only how to play the deck, but to play against the deck as well. Um, Infernape is about the only thing that really keeps us in check in the 2007 format, but it's a lot of fun to play. I am going to test that Lunatone Soul Rock a little bit more, see if that does enough to really affect the Infernape matchup. But other than that, I hope to see you in the next video.